So let's assume you already have the basics down of exactly what the formulas are for the area of a regular polygon. We don't really have a formula for irregular polygons, convex, concave, whatever, just for regular polygons. And that's because we can break them up into triangles, right? So if you know your formula already, like uh, let's say I've got uh, this formula here, and there's really two of them, right? You can either say that the area of the polygon is equal to the perimeter of the polygon times the apothem of the polygon divided by two. That's one classic formula. Uh, and really the reason why this works is because it's kind of a simplified version of uh, another formula that you want to be able to use, and that's the area of the polygon is equal to the number of sides times the area of each of those triangles that you can break it up into. And each of those triangles is just the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle divided by two. And so that's where you get this formula here, that the area of the triangle is the number of sides times one side length times the apothem divided by two, right? So you'll see really this, this formula here, maybe a little less smooth than this one, but it's more versatile in what it can do. In this one here, we've got a really straightforward example. This is just straight application of your formula, right? Over and over, what works in these questions is you say to yourself, let me take the formula, and you could even, like one way that you can you can apply it is you say to yourself, let me, for each letter in this formula, let me actually start out by making it a series of blanks, right? Like I'm using this same formula here, I'm writing out as a series of blanks. And I've got over here, uh, let me just put in a number two here like this. I've got that the area, which I'm leaving as a blank right now, equals number of sides times side length times apothem over two. Right? Let me put a little multiplication symbol in there for each of these. I've got this times this times this divided by two. And so then I look at my problem and I say, okay, uh, which of these letters, area, number of sides, side length, apothem, which of these piece of information do I already have? In this one here, it's an octagon, which means I can already fill in this blank here. It's an eight-sided figure. That's n is eight here because it's an octagon. I see that the side length here is six, so I can put a six in there for six centimeters. That's the length of one side. That's what the L stands for here. And then here, apothem. Do I have the apothem? Yeah, I know that the apothem, this guy, is four centimeters. So let me put four centimeters, a four in here like that. And do I have the area? No, I don't. So that's going to be blank, right? I can, I could even just put an A in here to remind myself that I'm representing area. But as long as I've only got one piece of information missing, then I can use the formula with all the blanks filled in and do the calculation. I would do the area I can calculate by doing eight times six, which is 48 times 4, which is 192, divided by 2 gives me 96. So I can calculate now just by properly using that formula. The area here is 96 centimeters squared. It's not a very good squared there, but you get the idea. Okay, that's straightforward, right? You might say, well, you're making things more complicated than you need to make them complicated here, than they need to be, right? Well, uh, you could be dealing with something a little more tricky. Like, let's say you have this question here. Right? You, see, you already tells me the answer I should get here, but let's see how I would get to it if I didn't already know the answer. Right? I can just say, let me make empty boxes here for each of my pieces of information and see which ones of them I can fill in. Right? I can look around at the information I have. I know the perimeter of this regular hexagon is equal to 60 centimeters. Okay. I could actually here would be better if I used the other formula because it already tells me the perimeter, right? You can use the one I just had, but let's use this one here. I've got uh, area is equal to perimeter times apothem over two. So again, I'm gonna make little boxes for myself that are the blanks, right? And I fill in the ones that I have, and then once I see what I have and what I don't, then I can do the calculation I need to or the algebra that I need to to get to the right answer. So I have blank equals blank times blank over two, two in here. And in this case here, again, this is a relatively straightforward question. I say, well, what information do I have? It tells me perimeter is 60. Okay, so 
if P is here in this formula, that means that here's where I would put the 60. I don't think I made the box big enough, so I might be bursting out there. i squeezing in the 60 there. Uh, the apothem here I don't have. And the area I don't have. So I still have two blanks here. So I'm not ready to do my algebra, do my calculations yet. But if I look here, it tells me that the top to bottom on this hexagon is 17.3. And if I remember what an apothem is, an apothem is what you get when you measure from the center down to one of the sides like that. An apothem hangs straight down, so an apothem hangs straight down from the middle. And if this total here is 17.3, then I can actually calculate that one half of this will be the same as my apothem. So I do 17.3 divided by 2, and that would give me an apothem 8.65 centimeters in this case here. And if I know that the apothem is 8.65, again, I didn't make the blank big enough here, but this is going to be 8.65 as well. Let me put that in over here. And now that all I've got left is one blank, I'm going to say that this blank right now, I can make it X or something. I'm going to make it A. I just have to do this calculation. 60 times 8.65 divided by 2. If you need a calculator, you can break that out and say 60 times 8.65 divided by 2, and that will give you your area. 259.5, which is what you get here. So that's why your area here is area equals 259.5 centimeters squared. Okay, so far these ones have actually both been relatively straightforward. The reason why I wanted to develop this whole method for you of putting different uh, blanks in and reminding yourself what they stand for is more for when you deal with questions that are a little more complicated, like this question here. This question says I've got uh, an apothem that I'm looking for uh, when I have a pentagon that has sides that are 4 centimeters long and an area of 55 centimeters squared. So if you're looking at this, uh, you might be reading and not really know where to start, right? You may have your formula area equals n times l times a over 2. And you might say, well, this is fine if I just take my n is, well, this is 5 because it's a pentagon. A uh, side length is 4 centimeters, an apothem is, well, I don't know, uh, and then I have to somehow get area from that. You can do it if you just make sure to put everything in the right spot and use your algebra, right? I've got a spot for area, spot for number of sides, a spot for side length, and a spot for apothem. And it might be that these are the three that I know and I can just fill them in and do a calculation and spit out the area. Or it might be something different, right? Like here... Let's take an inventory of what we've got. I've got a regular pentagon. That's a piece of information there. That means that I've got n sides is 5, right? The number of sides is 5. So let me put that piece of information in my formula. Next up, 4 centimeter sides. The sides here, each of them is 4 centimeters. The L in my formula stands for side length. So that 4 centimeters, that piece of information is going to show up there in my, in my formula, right? And the next piece of information I have, area of 55 centimeters squared. Okay, so somewhere I got to put that piece of information. Does it go here? This is an A there. No, this A stands for apothem, right? The big A is the one that stands for area. So the 55 is actually going to go over here. 55 will go over here. And that's all the information I have. Is there any other information that maybe I can manipulate? Like sometimes it'll give me an interior angle or an exterior angle that I can maybe use somehow. Not in this question. So I have a blank here and I want to figure out what it is. The missing apothem. I can't figure it out just yet, so let me put x in there for now. And now this becomes an algebra problem. Once I've used the formula properly, it's no longer really polygons. This is just algebra. I'm going to rewrite this without the boxes so you can see what we're doing. I've got 55 equals 5 times 4 times x, which is 20x all over 2. All, right, all I've done is I've simplified the 5 times 4 times x. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times x is 20x. So I've got 55 equals 20x over 2. And if I had this as an algebra problem, there's a few ways I could solve it. I'll tell you the best way is to simplify this right-hand side, right? 20x divided by 2. You can simplify that. 20x divided by 2. They don't need to be like terms for you to do that division. 20x over 2 just comes out to 10x. Okay. 
And so you're left with 55 equals 10x. 55 equals 10x. Now if you want to get x alone, really there's not much left to do. You just got to divide both sides by 10 here. And once you've done that, 10x divided by 10 gives you just plain old x, which is what you want. And on the other side, if you do 55 divided by 10, you get 5.5. So you get x is equal to 5.5. And since we're dealing with the length of the apothem here, uh, that 5.5, the units are going to be centimeters. Which means the answer to our problem, like we see here, is that the apothem is 5.5 centimeters long. The most important thing about how we've done this problem is the setup. Set up your formula and give yourself a spot to put each piece of information that comes along. Once you've got everything in the right place, it becomes an algebra problem and then your algebra skills take over and you're home free.